Welcome traders to another Ticknell Earnings Report Preview with me, Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report, it's important that we adhere to the risk disclaimer. The information provided today is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information and opinions expressed by me in this recording are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. <coughs> Equally important, CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 71% and 65% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with Ticknell UK and Ticknell Europe Limited. Okay, so let's jump into today's report. Today we're looking at PayPal, which released their earnings after the close in New York today. Um, Consensus is for an earnings per share of 89 cents on revenue of 6.4 billion. There is a whisper number on the street that earnings per share could come in slightly higher at 90 cents per share. Let's take a look at what we can expect in terms of the report. PayPal has boasted really a consistent track record of earnings and sales growth stretching back to at least 2010. In that year, it earned a mere 29 cents per share. In 2019, the company reported EPS of 2.96 per share. For 2020, the firm's earnings grew 31% to 3.8, uh, sorry, to $3.88 a share. In 2021, the company's EPS grew 18% to $4.60. Analysts expect the company's EPS to grow just 1% in 2022. But then they're looking for a 25% lift in 2023. PayPal reported its fourth quarter earnings results uh, on February the 1st. The company's uh, reported fourth quarter earnings result, uh, earnings fell way short of expectations, while to total payment volume also came in below estimates, resulting in nearly 25% plunge in the shares. Uh, PayPal continues to battle with Block. In the cryptocurrency space, the two payment companies are marketing apps that let shoppers get discounts, make installments, and buy cryptocurrencies. PayPal's Venmo and the Square Cash app started off as person-to-person -person money transfer services for family members and friends. Now they've evolved into broad consumer financial services apps, fueling growth for these leaders in the burgeoning field of digital payments. In late 2020, PayPal launched a cryptocurrency trading service allowing clients to buy and sell Bitcoin. In addition, PayPal customers are able to use cryptocurrencies to shop at 28 million merchants on its network, which started earlier this year. Let's take a look at the statistics around the trading patterns uh, at the earnings release for PayPal. Stock has moved higher in the immediate aftermath, 7 out of 12 previous reports. On average, though, the stock moved down 0.9% in the first day of trading after the company's reported earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, PayPal is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for, a, to, for an average loss of 0%. Um, the average post five day uh, performance is a, a positive 0.2%. Let's see what the options market's pricing in terms of implied volatility. Options traders looking for a 12.9% move on the earnings. Stock has averaged a 9.1% move in recent quarters. So decent volatility to trade there. Um, in terms of the flow and sentiment, we have a notable buyer of uh, just over 10,600 contracts of the $100 call expiring Friday, May 20th. The options order flow in general has been pretty bullish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings race has 54% uh, expecting an earnings beat. Short interest has increased by 15.5% since the company's last earnings release, while the stock has drifted lower by a 38.5% from its opening following the earnings release to be 57.2% below its 200-day moving average at $201.08. Okay, well, let's take a look and see what the technical setup uh, may give us from the trading perspective. I'm tracking a, a five-wave uh, decline here. And it looks to me as if we have achieved the minimum downside objective for the fifth wave to be in play, so 81, 83. Uh, we've got some nice momentum divergence developing here. So what I'm actually going to be looking for here are bullish reversal patterns post the earnings release to uh, to play the long side, looking for a break of the trend channel resistance through the $100 mark, where we've got that call buyer. And uh, through the high volume node then at 105.17. And ultimately what I'm looking for is a minimum three wave Corrective move to the upside to get a retest of that wave four high there coming in 
just above 123.79. At this stage, if we do get another uh, horrid report, I would anticipate uh, any moves through $82 to target a test of support down to the 74.80 before we could start to think about looking for this uh, the bullish reversal. But as we stand at the moment, I'm watching to see if we can get that turn into this wave five low and play for a minimum three way correction to the upside. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.